The next few days we spent as spectators. Basically, there are male and female competitors from all around the world after the deepest dive. It is split up into three disciplines. Constant weight with fins, constant weight no fins, and free immersion. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. There is a surface protocol that all divers must complete, which makes the event safer. Even though some divers may have just gone down to 100 meters, once returning to the surface, the diver has to respect the surface protocol within 15 seconds, or else they risk getting a yellow or red card, meaning they've either been penalized or are disqualified. So first, they have to remove all facial equipment, give one visible okay sign to the judges, and give one verbal OK sign to the judges. Also, the diver's face and nose must remain out of the water and there is to be no touching of the supportive kind upon their return to breathing air until the judges have declared the dive as complete. So we saw a few minor blackouts like this one. And another serious one which we didn't get on film. To see the rawness of a human's fight for survival is something so interesting and somehow refreshing in a way that reminds me of how incredible the human body actually is. Alright, so you just dove to how deep? Uh, 99 metres. Uh, yeah, so I, that's uh, in the free immersion discipline, which is where you like just pull yourself down the line, you can't wear any fins, and uh, it was a new Australian record, so I'm pretty chuffed. Yes! <laughs> I can't believe you just did that and you're just so normal afterwards, like... Well, you, you just you just get up and keep going. Like, yeah. that's the thing about breath holds, is that like your body can just do them, it's not like it uh, kills you to get yeah. it done. Congratulations! Legs. Oh. <laughs> 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 What did I just complete? Yeah. Uh, 111 meters with a swimming down with a monocle. Huh? And it's a British record. Well, <laughs> the best thing is, is like uh, I tried this on the first day, and obviously I got disqualified. Yeah. And then I tried it again, and I turned early, so it's like I tried the same depth three times. So yeah. I was a bit nervous I was going to miss it again. The rest of the day, yeah. Everyone was stoked. <laughs> this, is what it, this is what it's all about. <laughs> Delicious. 70 meters. 70 meters. Hmm. 70 seconds. That judge um, asked me if I'd like to come back next year and compete for <laughs> cow. You may have heard Riley talking about cow. He tells me that this is where he grew up. Cow had 1,200 people, including the surrounding farmers, when he lived there, and it's famous for its black stump. He also told me recently that he still holds the record for the 100 meter sprint, but is a little disappointed with the time as he says that Miss Franklin apparently hit the stopwatch a little late at the finish line. Riley's been diving down with all the divers. It's pretty funny. It's pretty cool to watch from up here. It's been such a good week so far watching all the free divers compete and just hanging around the blue hole like it really is a special place. Getting to dive that I feel really really lucky. Um, so yeah, we've been getting into the diving as well and while we're here, Raleigh's trying to beat his personal best. He's actually been hammering uh, Adam quite a bit, asking a lot of questions, which I thought was fine, but um, I'm starting to think it might be getting on Adam's nerves a little bit because he's given Raleigh this ridiculous set of tasks and exercises to do and like I'm sure they're not legit, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop Riley, he's really keen so um yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. And your tears are filling up the glasses, no expression, no expression. Hide my head, I wanna drown my soul. Riley, seriously, what are you doing? Riley! Alright, 
that rally. Time to brag. Time to brag. <laughs> what happened? Uh, personal best, I got down to 37. Woo! I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Some excellent coaching from I'm, my I'm going to stop teaching him because soon he's going to overtake me. <laughs> oh, and you had, a, you had a go at the monofin? Yeah, but I was extraordinarily graceful. They set me up for a fail like, <laughs> to give me shit, but it didn't happen. You were quite graceful, weren't you? Yeah. I believe your words were, he looks like a seal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At one stage you were like flopping like... <laughs> well, seal's not too bad. No, no seal's alright. I've been right. called worse. So it's the last night and um, all the freediving crew are ready to party. There's an after party down at the pub and they have a bit of a buffet for dinner which will be quite nice. A lot different to what we've been eating here. Wait, we're late! We've been so late this entire week. Like Adam's like, I'm on at 9.16 and it takes a good 20 minutes to get to Dean's Hole from here. And we've just been, yeah, hammering down this dirt track to make it on time. Not late for anything in five years. Yeah, we're always late. It's really bad, actually. We have given Mr. T's car an absolute hiding since we've been here. Sorry, Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the bronze medal goes to Alenka Artnik from Slovenia. <laughs> I'm really disappointed that they didn't call out my personal best. I might tweet William Trubridge later and say, hey man, that's not on. What about the little guys? A thing that you should know that was pretty incredible is that all of the competitors in this uh, freediving competition really, truly love what they do. And hearing the way they talk about it and all that sort of stuff, it's just, there's a deep passion for their sport and a larger connection to the ocean that comes from it all. It's starting to get a lot more popular now, freediving, but when all these guys started, it was just, it was, there wasn't much going on. There's no money in the sport. Um, there was no popularity, not, like neither fame nor fortune. So there's, there's just no, none of that involved in what it is that they're doing. And it was incredible listening to how they talk about the ocean and their sport. And it was really cool to get into the community a bit and um, they were very welcoming and that was very nice but more just the way they interact with each other and how they're matter-of-factly discussing the difference between 96 metres and 99 and, and how many years it can take to just get that extra metre um, when you get to those sort of levels and depths. Um, just on their connection with the ocean which is they don't sort of they don't really talk about but it's very obvious because of um, they're all sort of not wearing shoes and saying no to straws and they had trained the waitresses up in the various restaurants that they wouldn't even bring out um, any plastics or anything like that and just just the, the whole group and the atmosphere behind it was amazing it was really really good really excellent to be part of so thank you everyone <laughs> for being nice to us, <laughs> for welcoming us in and um, yeah, just hanging out and for doing what you do. And I ended up, I actually, Adam got me down to 39, which I'm going to call 40 metres because the watch doesn't necessarily ping at exactly the, the depth that you're at, so I'm going to call it 40. So it's not something that I was aiming for or have been after for a long time. I actually thought that I might be able to get a bit deeper than that, as I may have alluded to earlier. But um, yeah, it does become quite difficult the, the uh, deeper depths you get to. It becomes exponentially more difficult because of the pressure. It's not, so it's more, for me, it was more the pressure on your, on your lungs. So it's not about the breath hold. I could hold my breath for a lot longer than I needed to there. To, to get down to those depths, but it's just the squeeze that you're not used to. So unless you're practicing going to those depths, 
Um, there's not, or there's a few different things that you can do, but there's not much apart from just experience that's going to help you. Um, apart from just becoming comfortable in the water, which Elena and I have, have got lots of, so that wasn't really the issue. It was just the squeeze at those depths. Because what's the rule? If anyone's been scuba diving, you'll know it as well. I think everything halves at 10 meters and then halves again at 20 and then halves again at 40. So your lungs aren't this big, they're sort of like quite small. And just even getting the air from your lungs to your ears to equalize, that was that was the problem. And then you gotta learn different equalizing techniques. Yeah, well I'm not even there yet. Yeah. 40 meters though. Wow. Yeah! Thank you. <laughs> and as always, give that one a like if you enjoyed it. That really helps us out. A lot more than watching one of our adverts which pop up through no fault of our own at the start of the videos. Anyway, give that a like and thanks for watching. Back to standard Sailing La Vagabond episodes next Monday.